Hi, this is Theo from Pucklebox.com. Today I'm going to review the Dell Precision 15, the 5000 series workstation laptop. This particular model is the 5510. And Dell has lent this to me for two weeks for this review. I will be reviewing this from the perspective of an artist who uses this for graphic design, photo editing, and also 3D rendering. This is an upgraded edition from the default configuration. So the default comes with a quad core 2.3. This is a Xeon processor quad core 2.8 gigahertz. I will compare this with my Mac Pro 2013, which runs on a quad core 3.5. This review is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save some time, you can check out the text review. I will post a link in the video description below. It's essentially the same as this video review. So let's take a look at the hardware first. The standard retail price for this workstation is about 1,400 US dollar. And the default configuration comes with a Intel quad core 2.3 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of storage and a NVIDIA Quadro M1000M graphics card. So those are the key specifications and you definitely need to configure this laptop in order to get the best out of it because the storage is actually a 7200 RPM drive so you will want to upgrade that to the SSD hard drive. But let's take a look around the laptop. Let's take a look at the ports first. These are the ports on the left side. This is one for the power cable, USB 3, HDMI port, the what's this Thunderbolt 3 and a headphone jack. So on the other side we have a lock there. I think this button is for the battery life. Let's press this, yep, so my battery is full. This is a USB 3 port and an SD card reader. So what it doesn't have is actually a mini display port. I wish it came with that, but it does not. So I'm not sure if this Thunderbolt 3 port is powerful enough to power an external 4K monitor. The USB 3 port and the SD card reader are incredibly fast. You can put in an SD card and the folder will just pop up and you can copy onto the desktop it will just copy instantly this is a 7 gigabytes folder and it's copying at this particular speed when I'm using the same SD card or the USB 3 flash drive on my Mac Pro desktop it will take a few seconds for you to read the card or the drive and then it will take a few seconds before it will start copying so this copies instantly and this is definitely much faster than my Mac Pro my unit actually came with a 4k screen but you also have the option to go for a 1080p resolution screen. Now the difference is this 4K screen is a Geekzo panel IGZO and has 100% Adobe color gamut versus the IPS which only has like 72% so the color reproduction on this screen is just much better but note that this is quite glossy so um, personally I find it to be a bit distracting if you are working with a light source behind this is something you are going to see so um, if you're working indoors and the light is above you, I think that is fine. There's something to take note of. This is also a touch screen, so you can use that to launch applications. It's useful, but um, you tend to get your fingerprint onto the screen. Although I find that the screen is not, it's quite resistant to fingerprinting as well, but you will definitely see some fingerprints though. So if you are wondering whether or not you can draw on this screen using your stylus or finger, well, using your finger you can do that, but there's no pressure sensitivity. However, if you are using a stylus, then for some reason it doesn't work as well. So this is a stylus, a rubber stylus, and it doesn't work that well. So it's mainly for finger presses. 
So let's take a look at the keyboard and stuff like that. So the keys are very well placed, well positioned, and they are very nice to touch. And I'm not sure if you can see the backlight. Yes, there's some backlight going on if, you are, if your environment is quite dark. So the lights will come on. The trackpad is large and there are the left click and the right click. Other than that, I think um, that's all I'm covering about the hardware. Okay, uh, I want to talk a bit more about the 4K screen. The thing about the 4K screen is um, if you want to choose a 4K screen, make sure that the applications that you are running supports this resolution because this is a very high resolution. Let me take a look at Photoshop CS6. Um, so this is Photoshop CS6 and you can see how glossy this screen is. The menus, the buttons are so small. It's almost, un it's almost unusable. I just cannot use this. This is like so frustrating to use. So you will need to upgrade to Adobe Creative Cloud to get the optimized user interface. If not, if you are using this CS6 like this, um, you are going to tear your hair out. So this is unusable in my opinion. Although you can use a hack to hack the user interface to make it scale. For example, this is Illustrator CS6. And the menus here are much bigger. And even though they are bigger, they are actually scaled up from the low resolution interface that is meant for 1080p. But now that they are bigger, it's actually pixelated. Let me zoom in and let you see. I'm not sure if you can see clearly, but this is the best my camera can go. Anyway, the fonts here, they are a bit pixelated as well as the buttons down here. And if you were to open a file, you'll find that the file is also pixelated. Even though um, this is meant to be a vector software, everything's supposed to be sharp. However, uh, it's going to be pixelated. This is the file that I just opened and it's actually created in Adobe InDesign. I exported it as an EPS file, so now it's open here in Illustrator CS6. Um, no problem moving around whatsoever, no lag at all. The only thing is a 4K screen. So if I actually zoom in close, unfortunately my camera cannot capture that. But actually this line may look sharp, but actually it's not that sharp because there's this little pixel going on, the anti-aliasing thing going on. So it's not perfectly sharp because I applied a hack to scale up the resolution of the user interface and it scale up the file as well. So this is not perfectly sharp. So this is something to take note of. But this is not as uh, frustrating as using this tiny buttons here so this is um, this is ridiculous um, you can use other software like for example mischief all the newer software I think they are updated for larger user interface for example this is mischief and I have Midibank paint pro as well this is a painting software you can see that the menus here are much bigger also this is much better so um, let's try and use this Photoshop and open a file that I was looking at earlier. This is a 600 megabyte file and it took a few seconds to open. If I were to open this on my computer in the office, it's going to take 10, 20, 30 seconds to open. This is very fast because the storage inside this laptop they actually gave me the Samsung PCI Express SSD, one gig. You can customize it up to one gigs. So this is really very fast. So if I were to zoom in, you can see just how smooth the zooming in is. And the resolution for this is 300 dpi and it's one meter by 50 centimeters. So you can zoom in without any lag at all. How about color correction? Let's. It is incredibly frustrating to use user interface that is so small. 
and I'm actually using a Logitech Bluetooth mouse, the M557, because it offers better control compared to the trackpad. If you're going to use the trackpad, you are probably going to tear your hair out trying to click on all these small tiny buttons. Anyway, I'm going to change the saturation for this particular file. So I'm just going to click around the saturation bar and just notice how fast the saturation changes. It's almost instantaneous. And if I were to drag around the bar, then you will notice some lag. But to me, this is more than satisfactory because uh, I usually just click around the bar and it updates instantly. That is very, very good. Now I'm going to use uh, Adobe Lightroom. These are all 16 megapixel photos, raw format. When I exported them and I compare it to my Mac Pro from 2013, which runs a quad core 3.5 gigahertz, the speed is roughly the same. The difference, the time difference is not too big. And the reason is because this particular model, Dell has configured it with the Xeon 3, sorry, Xeon 2.8 gigahertz quad core. So there are actually three different configurations that you can choose from for the processor. They are all quad core. So the first one is the 2.3 gigahertz, second is the 2.7, and the third one is the 2.8. So if you were to upgrade, I definitely recommend you upgrade to the 2.8 quad core because the price difference between that and the 2.7 quad core is only 70 US dollar. So you get better performance just by paying us $70 more. The next thing I want to show you is um, Maya. So this laptop comes with a NVIDIA Quadro M1000M graphics card. And this is Maya. This is the file. This is the model that I ran, tried to model. This is actually Singapore National Stadium. I modeled this for an infographic. There are no textures on this, so this is just a polygon model. And I wouldn't say that this is a very high polygon count model. But you can zoom in and out with no lag at all. You can pan around, no lag at all. And when you want to render, it renders very fast as well. So let me go into the occlusion layer and hit the render button. Of course, I compared this render with my Mac Pro as well, and I find that this laptop maybe is about 10 to 20% slower in terms of time. So this is actually very respectable. I mean, this is a really powerful computer to, to be only 10 and 20% less than my quad core 3.5 gigahertz Mac Pro. I say this is fantastic. So you can render out a preview screen like this. This only took me 34 seconds, but this is a 1080p screen. So you can look at this resolution and compare it to the 4K resolution. You can configure this laptop with two different types of battery. One is the three cell, the other is the six cell. This model that I have here comes with the six cell battery and the battery life is about five to six hours. If you are using Photoshop, Lightroom, Maya a lot, then it's probably going to be under five hours. So I would highly recommend you upgrade to the better battery for the better battery life, obviously, because if you are going to be using the three cell battery, well, I would say three hours. So that is not very good. So you have to be plugged in to the power outlet all the time. So upgrade your battery. And one thing about the battery is um, the six cell battery is bigger. So in order to use a bigger battery in this laptop, you have to use a smaller SSD. So you have to get the PCI Express SSD instead of the SATA SSD. The laptop is 2.1 kg. It's a bit heavy, but when you consider the hardware that's inside, I would say this is a very decent weight. The build quality is excellent metal on the front and the back and also on the back we have two long rubber strips to prevent slipping there's also the ventilation grill here that sucks in the air because the fan is actually here below the screen 
and the fan doesn't actually come on unless you do very heavy duty work like 3D rendering or video encoding or charging the battery. Uh, if you are just doing 2D work, digital illustration, page layout, serving the web, YouTube, um, yeah, the fan is not going to come on. I forgot to mention the speaker. The speaker is down here. You need to put the laptop on the table so that the downward facing speaker can bounce the sound from the table to your ears. If you are just using it on your lap, um, it's a bit hot and also the sound is going to bounce downwards. You are not going to, you are going to be hearing very muffled audio. The other thing I like is the, the very thin bezel. So this bezel here is actually only half a cm, so it makes the screen feel very big. Yeah, I've not seen the IPS anti-glare model, but this glossy model, I think it's good, except I have to emphasize again, make sure that the software you are using is updated for use on a 4K resolution screen like this. If not, it's going to be a very frustrating experience. I think I covered about everything I want to talk about. Um, oh yeah, I did not test any video, video software on this laptop because I don't have any video software. But if I were to make a guess based on the performance, because I compare Maya on this laptop versus Maya on my Mac Pro, the rendering speed is about 10 to 20% difference. This one is a bit slower by 10 to 20%. So I would say that video when it comes to video editing, this is going to be 10 to 20% slower as well, which is actually very decent and more than satisfactory. So yeah, um, who do I recommend this laptop for? Or recommend this laptop to? I would recommend this to people who need the processing power, people who need a graphics card. So if you are into 3D, if you are into video editing, then yes, this is a good a workstation for you. If you are just doing 2D work like digital painting, page layout, um, this is going to be a very serious overkill. This is too powerful for just 2D work. Um, you really want to take advantage of the processor because now you have the option to put in such powerful processor and such powerful graphics card in this. I think this is very good. So um, in terms of price over value, well if you are getting the default configuration which costs about 1400 US dollar um, I do not recommend you get that because the storage drive for that is very slow upgrade to the PCIe Express SSD and get the better battery you may not want to upgrade the processor I think that is okay if you want to save money but upgrade the RAM upgrade to the PCI Express and upgrade the battery I think that will make this uh, quite a very decent workstation. That is all for my review of the Dell Precision 5510 today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I will answer them. I will also post a link to my text review in case I need to post any updates. I will update my text review. So yeah, that's all for today's review. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.